if you are already writing, then you are bored during the time when you're not writing. That's how addictive it is. It's like putting on a mask, in a sense, and then finding out that the mask is more interesting than you are. You start writing, and you don't know what you're going to write. You think you do. And you start writing, and the writing itself touches upon other things within you. Poetry is wonderful in that regard. I take my teeth out so that I cannot talk. I take my feet off and put them carefully on the sock drawer so that I won't go for a walk. I take my fingers off and lay them on the side table so that I cannot take up a pen and set the brain a buzzing. I put my stumpy hands on either side of my head, squeeze and release, squeeze and release, to turn my pulsing head into something like a pumpkin. I drop my breathing down to a pond with no wind on it. Then, when I close my eyes, I can hold still my thought of you. I was just writing wacko lines about taking things off and reducing my capacity as a human being. And then it struck me that's exactly what you should do if you're trying to come to a kind of a, a real genuine appreciation of something or someone. So you have to sort of reduce everything. My name is Peter Sears, and I am the seventh Oregon Poet Laureate. The Poet Laureate is meant to embody poetry throughout the state, it's to do visits, and, and to do readings, and to do poetry workshops. One is, was asked, what would you like to do as a project? And the project that I suggested was I called Expanding Voices. Expanding Voices means to expand the base of the Poet Laureate program by including people who speak and write in other languages. You know, this is a very Anglo state in many, many ways. So how do you, you know, how do you break through that? All of us that have emigrated from different countries we have all these other gifts that we would like to share with the next generation. I see my grandson, and he will not speak Spanish, or very little. Each generation loses a little bit more of the inheritance. Taca atrás, chico. It is laughter and tears and strife. It is the siren at six o'clock, sending people home to begin the night as a trade wind picks up and mingles with more cars and more traffic. Voicing is concerned with the chorus of tree frogs. Coqui, coqui, coqui. De donde vienes, pa donde vas. To make that leap that poetry can do is just take ordinary words, rearrange them, and, and have a leap of consciousness that people go, wow, yeah, I, I, I understand, I connect, I see, I feel. And once you learn somebody else's voice, whatever that means, it becomes part of your own consciousness. And if we included all the voices in our consciousness, how can we not be friends? Most people who come to readings either are already writing or would like to write. They have it in their mind, well, you know, maybe uh, let me listen to this guy and see if, I, if it's something I can do. They want, to, they want, they're interested in their own expression. So you're, you're available to people so that if they get going on something, they have an interest, you can help them. You, ha you have some idea what's going through them. It's a, it's a kind of growth possibility. You go out beyond yourself.